In this lesson, number three, we will be discussing the well-being of the emergency medical responder. Okay, we're going to look at this scenario for a second, and you're going to think about how you would respond to this scenario. Your fire rescue unit responds to a call for a medical emergency involving a man who has cut himself while doing yard work. When you and your partner arrive, you see that the lawnmower is turned upside down and there are tools lying near it. The man is bleeding from a large cut on his arm. The lawnmower started on its own, a bystander says. The man is pale and clammy. So think about the scenario. Think about how you respond to it. And when we meet in person, we are going to discuss the scenario. Um, you're going to tell me how you feel about it. You know, I'll tell you some key points and things you should consider regarding this scenario. Okay, discussing the well-being of the emergency medical responder, we're going to discuss stressful situations. What are examples of stressful situations? First, let's talk about what is stress as far as the definition, okay? Stress is the body's normal response to any situation that changes a person's existing mental, physical, or emotional balance. Stress can result from positive experiences such as a wedding or more difficult situations such as responding to a life-threatening emergency. Okay, we're going to discuss in depth here a few uh, more stressful situations, okay? So dangerous situations can be stressful. Um, fires, scenes of violent crime, agricultural accidents, and other emergency scenes all involve a certain measure of danger. The next will have physical and psychological demands. Some rescues such as extra extrications uh, may place substantial physical burdens on the EMR. Others such as rescuing an abused child may involve extraordinary psychological demands. Next is critically injured or ill people. Critically injured or ill people responding to a call to help someone who is critically injured or ill can be highly stressful because of the possibility of not being able to save the patient. Next is death and dying patients. Death is disturbing to most people, but the feelings of powerlessness and not being able to save someone's life may also bring about tremendous guilt and grief. Overpowering sights, smells, and sounds. Disturbing sights, strong smells, and sounds that are upsetting to the EMR may accompany scenes of illness and accidents especially those that are severe. Next is multiple patient situations. All of the above situations can occur when a single person is injured or ill, but the effects are magnified in a multiple casualty incident, which can be truly overwhelming. Angry or upset patients family and bystanders in an emotionally charged situation, tempers may flare, adding to the intensity of the situation. Next slide.
Okay, we're going to be dealing with expectations to resuscitation. Okay, you might be in a situation in which you think a person has been dead for a while and you are unsure whether you should attempt to resuscitate that person. The general rule is to always attempt to resuscitate a patient without a pulse or normal breathing except in the following situations. A valid do not resuscitate order for a phys uh, physician orders for life-sustaining treatment from that meets local guidelines is present at the scene and directs not to attempt resuscitation. Next is obvious signs of death are present in the patient. These signs include tissue decay, um, rigor mortis, um, obvious mortal wounds, um, dependent lividity. The, the situation is so dangerous, such as a gunman on the scene, that attempting to resuscitate the patient would endanger your life. Okay, so on this slide, we're going to be discussing some signs of grief. There will always be times you are called to assist grieving patients or family members. There are some predictable responses to grief, though people do not always experience them in any particular order. Keep in mind that everyone's reaction to death and dying is unique and not everyone will experience every stage of grief, nor will everyone experience grief in the same order. Remain non-judgmental throughout the grieving process. The stages of grieving include, the first is denial. The patient or family member denies the seriousness of the situation in order to buffer the pain of the event. Number two is anger. The patient or family member projects feelings of anger towards other people, especially the closest to the individual. Do not take anger personally. Even though it may seem to be directed toward you, be alert to anger that may become physical and endanger you or others. Next, bargaining. The patient or family member may attempt to negotiate with a spiritual higher being or even with EMS providers in an effort to extend life. Depression. The patient or family member exhibits sadness and grief, is usually withdrawn and may cry continuously, continually. Allow the affected person to express these feelings and help the patient or family member to understand that these are normal feelings associated with death. Next is acceptance. The patient or family member ultimately accepts the situation and incorporates the experience into the activities of daily living. In an effort to survive or to support a loved one, use good listening skills in this phase. Okay, the next slide is warning signs and symptoms of stress, personal stress. As an EMR, be sure to note if you or those around you are exhibiting any signs or symptoms of personal stress during or following a response. When interacting with patients and their families, during an emergency, you may hear them talk about or exhibit certain signs or symptoms of stress. Warning signs and symptoms of stress include difficulty sleeping and nightmares, 
irritability with co-workers, family, and friends, feelings of sadness, anxiety, or guilt, indecisiveness, loss of appetite, loss of interest in sexual activity, isolation, loss of interest in work, feelings of hopelessness, alcohol or drug misuse or abuse, inability to concentrate. Critical incident stress reactions. Confusion, short attention span or poor uh, concentration. Denial, guilt, depression, or anger. Change in interactions with others. Increase or decreased eating. Uncharacteristic excessive humor or silence or any other unusual behavior okay we all react differently to stress Okay, this is another activity that we will be doing in person, and uh, we will be discussing this in person. So, I'll give you the scenario. You are the first to arrive on scene of a multi-vehicle collision involving a tractor trailer and several cars. The driver of the tractor trailer is severely injured with a portion of his hand partially severed. A person in one of the cars, a young teenager, has been thrown through the windshield and is lying in a contorted position on the side of the road. Another person is trapped in the car and unable to move her leg. Okay, so take a while and think about how you will handle this situation. And I will discuss, we will discuss the key things that you should consider uh, when we meet in person regarding this issue. Here are a few steps to relieve stress after an incident. Use quick relaxation techniques. Okay. Um, eat a good meal. Okay. Nutrition is important. Avoid caffeinated beverages. Avoid alcohol and drugs. Review the event and clear up any uncertainties. Get enough rest. Get involved in physical physical activities. Okay. Those are a few things you can do to try to relieve stress after an incident. Stress is inevitable. We all stress in different ways. And uh, you're going to need different ways to combat stress in order to try to remain healthy. Okay, here's another scenario that we will be discussing in person, okay? You are the medical, I mean, you are the emergency medical responder. After emergency medical services, EMS personnel assume the care of your patient with the injuries from the lawnmower. You note the large amount of blood left at the scene, okay? So we'll just discuss, we'll discuss this in person. Um, obviously, we have a lot of blood on the scene. Um, we have a lawnmower going and different things like that. Okay, health of the emergency medical responder.
physical well-being, physical fitness, nutrition, and sleep. This can be very important. Um, you can be involved in a situation in which you are trying to save someone and there are multiple victims and requires your strength and conditioning. Uh, you can have a you know, cardiac failure or, or some other uh, adverse reaction to overexerting yourself because you're not in condition, you're not in good shape, which can create another victim. So that is important. Prevention of disease transmission. That's also very important. Use PPE, uh, disinfect things and stuff like that so that we, are, we don't create a bigger problem. Safety, including protection from the sun. Uh, we don't know what kind of conditions we're going to be in within every scenario. You can have rain, you can have the sun, you can have different things like that that we have to protect ourselves and uh, make sure we can do our job safely. Okay, then we have the mental well-being, you know, st stress management techniques, you know, different things we have to do in order to stay healthy, uh, keep our stress levels down. Uh, there's no way to avoid having stressful situations, but we will encounter stressful situations and, um, you know, we might have to do things. You might like swimming, you might like tennis, you might like... Uh, sports, um, you know, sauna, whatever it takes, yoga, um, exercise, you know, different things to help you balance out the struggles of life. Balance of work and life demands, you know, might need to take a vacation, uh, might need to take some time off work and, or take some time off other things in life that, you know, uh, causing you to stress or, you know, your mental well, mental health. Avoidance of alcohol or drug use or misuse. Uh, many people use alcohol and drugs to cope with problems that they don't feel like they can emotionally deal with. And then that causes uh, physical and uh, psychological problems with the person. So we want to create healthy stress management habits.